Hey everybody and welcome to another uh, video here from AP World History in 516. Um, today we're going to be focusing in on some content. Some of the few uh, videos before this we're talking about just kind of the general introductions to the channel. In particular today I want to look at something called HIP. It's an acronym uh, that I take my students through and HIP is something that we can use in our DBQ documents uh, or essays to try and get some of those second analysis and reasoning points. These are the hardest points to get, but I'm going to show you just a few really easy ways to be able to think about how you can get those HIP points. Now, in particular, HIP is an acronym that I use in class, and it stands for the following. H stands for historical context, all right? That is what's going on around this time frame that kind of sets the background for when the document was written. I is a little bit easier. It's intended audience. Who is this document written for? All right, the first P is purpose. So why was the document written? And I look at the purpose and intended audience. Those are two separate things. Intended audience is who is it written for? Purpose is why was it written? And then lastly, the second P in HIP is point of view. All right, this one's a little bit tougher because I just think with the documents that we look at, there's a lot of time that separates us. So it can be difficult to think about how someone's perspective could be influencing the way that they're writing. So how do you get HIP points or how do you even think about HIP? All right. The biggest thing where I think HIP comes into play is if you look in this source, every document that you'll find on a DBQ will have a source and then it will have some general information and work with. All right. So when we're working here, um, we're looking at key things. What I do is I underline things and then I draw arrows to show my thoughts or connections. All right, so for example here we have Firez Shah Tuluk who is the author of this. We don't really know a whole lot about him yet. However, as we read further we find ruler of the Delhi Sultanate in India from 1351 CE to 1388 CE. And this is where you can find all of these hip points, all right? So if you're thinking about, well, what is this person's point of view? Well, he's a ruler, all right? So if you think about ruler, what are some things that come to mind? You know, when I think about it, someone who's a ruler, they are a leader, they have power, they have influence, they make the final judgment calls uh, about anything in their area that they control. Their word is the final word. So I think we can assume that if this person's the ruler, uh, we can make some good ideas or good um, connections or assumptions to say, look, because this person is a ruler, these are the things that they're saying, which shows how tolerant or intolerant these areas were about diverse opinions. Now, um, location-wise in India, you can talk about uh, intended audience. If you're thinking about the ruler of the Delhi Sultanate, you could use this to say, well, he's probably addressing this to his subjects, right? That's something that routinely rulers do. They make decrees, um, and a lot of times their intended audiences are the people who they rule over. So I don't think it would be too far to assume that that's the same case here. And then lastly, dates are where we start to see ways that we can use contextualization. Uh, from here, 1351 to 1388, um, these are kind of some weird years to work with, but like I teach my students, there are just certain things, certain events, certain things that are happening in the world that are just big, historically contextual um, ideas. And then especially when we keep in mind this prompt about diverse ideas, well, if you think about unit one and especially unit two um, where we're looking at trade well how do ideas even spread to the point to where they can be accepted by other groups of people and when you think about it in this time period we've not only got the Silk Road that is developed it is being controlled by the Mongols during this time uh, we're in this period called Pax Mongolica to where now people are trading even more which means that they're probably sharing their ideas um, we have trade that's continuing to happen in places like the Trans-Saharan trade route as well as the Indian Ocean 
trade route. So I think if you mention something about uh, the use of trade along the Silk Road, Indian Ocean trade route, Trans-Saharan trade route, is allowing for the spread of these diverse ideas, which you then connect back to the prompt of, yes, they are accepting or no, they're not accepting. Those are easy ways that you can get hip points, which again is how you get that secondary point for a DBQ. All right. So before we've even looked at the document, there are really easy ways to think about uh, how you go about getting hip points. And what I would encourage you to do is just find a couple of practice documents um, and then go through and just look at the source only. Underline important pieces of information, circle those words or phrases, and from those words or phrases, come up with things that you can connect, kind of similar to how ruler, uh, this is a person who's in power, it's a leader, etc. All right, and then use that to develop your ideas about HIP, all right? So with that said, that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, just kind of a brief refresher on HIP, how you can get HIP points. The biggest thing is practicing uh, because obviously these types of information that comes in sources can be very different, widespread, uh, the dates could change, locations, who is being uh, addressed, who is speaking or sending these messages. Uh, so the biggest thing I would say is just practice working with this sourcing information here and you will get better at HIP. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is AP World History in 516. I'm Justin. Uh, if you like the video, make sure that you like it. And if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we've got some subscriber goals that are coming up that I'm excited to share with y'all. Thanks.